can't minimize this. Close that out because I don't need it. Okay, so what exactly is occlusion culling in Unreal Engine 4? So occlusion culling is using the bounds of an object so that it can determine the asset should be rendered or not. So for instance, like right here, it's like you may notice some like some pop in and, and things like this uh, um, often in games. So this is determined by the bounds. So if we go here to the visualize, actually advanced and bounds, and we select an object, you can see this bounds right here. And this is what's going to determine whether the object should be rendered or not. Um, so, and you can only see the bounds like whenever an object is actually selected. But like this right here is like, you may be able to see it, you may not. Um, there's like a little bit of a white flash on the edge here as something is kind of being spawned in. Uh, so that is occlusion culling. So we don't really want to be able to see things that aren't rendered. So if this wall is in the way, anything behind it, we don't want that to render because it's just going to take up performance. If it's rendering, that's going to be more, more processes that are being used on CPU, GPU, or, or whatever. Um, so we want to be able to, to fight these kind of things so that we cannot have these kind of issues with things popping in and out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a console command here that helps us see the bounds of an object, and we're able to see whether that object is being occluded or not. And it can help us kind of troubleshoot some things as well, like uh, if we're noticing performance issues or if we have a lot of meshes in the scene. So um, you can use the console command r.visualize occluded primitives, and then enter a one at the end, and you're able to see this. This only works in the editor. So if I go to like play or simulate in the editor, you're not able to see this at all. So you can see these green boxes right here. This is gonna be a bounds box that is associated with our mesh. So back here, I've actually got a bunch of just very small meshes so that way it's easier to see the occlusion culling happening. So if you notice the shape of our box here, we have a sphere um, that goes around and then we also have a bounce box that's inside. So as I move off, now this object isn't, is selected so it's not gonna be occluded um, when it's selected like that because it's actually needed to be rendered. So, but if I let go, you can see that it's still got the box shape of my mesh. Now, the same would be true of this right here, this one as well. So it's like if I go behind here and I deselect it, I can now see that the box bounds of my mesh are there to occlude it. <coughs> Excuse me. So what can you do to fight these kind of things? Um, so... Now that we know that we have this green bounds box, you can actually go over here in the mesh. So it's like, let's say for instance, like we'll select this one that's right out of the screen if I move here. And we're gonna search for bounds and scale. This is one way to go about it, but it's not necessarily the best way. But, um, okay, so one is the default. Now, if I increase this to say 1.25 and I let go, you can see that that bounds box has actually increased. Now our mesh has not increased in size, but the bounds have. So if I select that mesh again, and I go to, let's just say some really high value, you can see that that's now a really big bounds. And as soon as I come into view, it's actually being rendered, even though it's graphics mesh is not even on screen or even close to being really on screen at that point. So. That's one way to go about uh, adjusting. It's not the best way, but it's it's an option. Um, just keep in mind that increasing the bound scale like this is going to, it's gonna add to performance issues um, just down the line if you're using it a lot. I would only use it on, on objects where you really, really need it um, if some of the other methods, uh, methods I'm gonna show you aren't working for you. So I'm gonna ditch this little section. I'm gonna go to this other one over here because this comes up quite often. Um, so, and I'm actually gonna disable our Visualize occluded primitives so this is easier to see. Um, do it again. There we go. Um, okay, so people often ask, uh, you know, they may have a cave or some dark lit area, and it's, you know, they got a bunch of. They're they're trying to uh, 
take on a modular design or you know you, you just have some objects that are going to be like your wall pieces but as you notice here when I'm sliding back and forth um, these meshes are causing a white flash that are happening just because things are being spawned in it's like a, again it's like I've got a bunch of different um, smaller meshes in the back there so as I get closer to say this wall here that I had originally had it becomes much more easy to see the kind of effect that can happen with this um, so again uh, let's see here R visualize oh actually I need to be in the editor not play R dot visualize occluded primitives put that to one so I can see here and you can see as these bounds are coming into view it's it's causing the flash from where these are being rendered right at their box bounds now there is another method um, one second here uh, there's another method in the engine that is not on by default um, that is HZB occlusion um, what this does is takes an approximation of the size of the mesh and it will make it uh, so that you know if it's a larger mesh um, or a smaller mesh it can it can determine based on the size of the mesh itself rather than the bounds box whether it should be rendered in view or not so if we do HDB occlusion and put this to one now you see how this actually got rid of some of our occluders showing that they're actually rendered in the view even though we cannot see them so what this can do is I'll go to play here now when I move you notice the pop-in has stopped for the most part it's gonna still happen occasionally because you're still using a collision culling and if you move really fast or you have a large object in front of you and you're moving right along that wall or whatever the object is you can still move fast enough that these things are not occluded um, or, or well they are occluded and they pop back in um, just due to the way real-time rendering works so that is an option as well but uh, in case you missed it our ACB occlusion and then one to enable it zero to disable it so right now we're back on the old method or the default method um, okay so with something like that HCB occlusion isn't going to take care of every single issue that you may have um, as well as you know the default method won't do it and you don't necessarily want to just go through and just start increasing the bounds of each thing because again you know it's not the best option and you can do it in a much more performant type way so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my third example over here and what I've done is okay so since I've got the uh, R visualize occluded primitives on you can actually see all of this right here is rendered inside this giant box that I have made now what I've done here is I've actually just taken a BSP box and then made it hollow and then turned it into a static mesh so that I can actually just render and now with this example right here I've got HCB occlusion is disabled so it's not being used actually let's make sure I did disable that one okay so HCB occlusion is disabled and what I've got now is just uh, my visualize so I can see what's what's not being done I'm gonna disable that so we can demonstrate a little bit easier zero okay so this right here is just using all the default settings and now as you'll notice there's no pop-in that you can see in this dark area even though I've got a bright world outside I've got an emissive you know um, the the blueprint sky sphere this default in the engine is emissive so you know that's not being rendered and causing any flashes or anything like that now you may be asking uh, why did I convert the BSP box that was hollow into a static mesh um, just to show you a little bit of why BSPs are not the best option for that now, let me get rid of console command now if we look here I'm gonna drag stop play first okay so I've got my BSP box um, I know it's a little dark in here to see this but we can see the outline of it um, so I've got my BSP box here I'm gonna actually come down here and make it hollow and then scale it up just a little bit 
Okay, so as you can see, you know, on the, the lines there, it's, it's hollow on the inside. Now, what I'm going to do is go back to r.visualize included primitives, and I'm going to enable that. And what you can see here is this BSP box that I've made, it has this one box right over here that is the left side of it. So BSPs, just to be more performant on their own, they occlude themselves, you know, based on their, their faces. So this isn't going to really help us in this case. So if I were to put a big BSP box outside of this instead of converting it to a static mesh, I'm still going to see the same pop-in issues because other meshes in front of it are occluding the BSP from being shown. So um, finally, I... That's pretty much the gist of occlusion culling. There's one other thing up here in the project settings that I'm going to go over. Um, so this is uh, this is project settings. If you go to your start menu, project settings, it's going to bring up this window here. And then if you go under the rendering tab here, you'll notice the culling section. And you can actually just go in here and disable occlusion culling at all. I would not recommend this uh, because that means no mesh in the engine would be occluded. So we go back, our visualize occluded primitives. So that one, as you'll notice, nothing is being occluded at this point. So everything is being rendered, um, which can, you know, depending on what the style of your game is, what you're going for, you know, this may be an option for you, but um, by default, I wouldn't recommend it for most everyone. So re-enable that, and it's like we, we now have occlusion culling again. Okay, um, one last thing uh, after this. Uh, this is going to be a mobile-oriented um, topic, really. Um, but there is the pre-computed visibility volumes. Now, these, um, they're not needed in really... Uh, in any just default like Windows or, or Mac type game or anything you're building for a desktop um, typically or console. But for things like mobile where dynamic occlusion is not enabled, you'll need uh, pre-computed visibility volumes. These, what they'll do is they'll take a, a snapshot of essentially what is in view of the player. You only want to put these in your playable areas um, and then it will occlude anything in those areas. So it's, uh, it's something definitely to keep in, in mind for mobile. Uh, and actually in the project settings up here, there is actually warn about no pre-computed visibility. Um, if you're developing a mobile game, you may want to go ahead and just enable this by default uh, so that way you get that warning and make sure that you're, you're staying on top of uh, keeping the occlusion going. But uh, that's pretty much the gist of occlusion culling in, uh, in UE4.